Is your team virtual either partially or entirely? Are you looking to hire new employees, new team members to your virtual team, but it's a process. It's a process, it's fraught with headaches and pitfalls and you're not sure who to trust because everyone is just out there trying to put their best foot forward and persuade you, hey, pick me, I am perfect for this job, you should hire me and you don't know who to trust because oftentimes a company, our company, we, we go through this all the time because this is hiring is uh, basically we, we give our clients like a big skip button on hiring. So it's kind of like a cheat code for getting creative work done uh, with Autogrow. So it's something that we are constantly uh, improving on. And I'm so excited to talk to you guys today about this topic. Uh, I'm going to be giving you five expert tips for recruiting virtual employees to your team. Okay, so this is, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's something that we are doing on a regular basis and we're constantly succeeding, not succeeding, and then tweaking our systems and making it better. And we've just made so much progress in this area. So I'm excited to share some of these insights with you here today. All right, tip number one, recruiting tip number one for building a reliable emphasis on reliable virtual team. You want to think of your hiring process as a funnel. Okay, so you want to think about it just like there are sales funnels for uh, attracting traffic, converting those traffic, uh, that traffic to leads, opt-in leads, and then ultimately into customers or clients that take out their credit card and buy from you. Okay, so a hiring process is the same way. All right, but the, the difference is, is you know, obviously um, you're more like the buyer, right? You're making the investment, you're taking the financial risk, okay? Um, but the parallels work just as well, you know, because you need people coming in, you need them to be filling out a form or submitting some sort of uh, documentation, skill test, whatever it is. So think of it like a funnel uh, because it will make, it will transform your whole business and, uh, or at the very least, your recruiting process. Because when you think about it like a funnel, you're going to be thinking about it in terms of, okay, how do I maximize positive results coming out at the bottom and therefore shape the steps preceding that, uh, that final step at the bottom where people ultimately convert, you decide to hire them. How do I shape the steps above it to maximize the probability of a good outcome there at the bottom in the form of just a great new team member, someone who shows up, was a great fit uh, to actually do the work and just a pleasure to work with. So think about it like a funnel. And some research for you to consider is 75% of resumes are actually rejected before they even reach the hiring manager according to top resume. Okay, so then this, and, and I'm sharing this stat because it just supports the idea that, okay, you know, it, it's again, just like a funnel, you know, it collapses down to fewer and fewer people at each step. And so it, it should be a multi-step uh, process. I mean, I think pretty much for every company, there's at least a couple of steps. But, uh, and, and also think of it too, in terms of the laws, the 11 laws of sales funnel physics, which we pioneered here, this uh, framework for understanding why are people you know, being persuaded to convert or not convert within a sales funnel, but applying it to a hiring funnel. Um, Law of friction says that you can increase or decrease the amount of friction. Uh, it's sort of like turning on the spigot for a hose, but like doing it gradually. Okay, so like you're, you're opening it up more, so more water flows through, or you're tightening it so less flows through, in this case, like less applicants, for instance. So uh, you want to think about it as a multi-step process and think about how friction, the role that friction plays towards creating that desired end result, which is a great hire. One more stat from Jobvite. If your conversion rate is more than 11%, you probably have a cool brand and a killer career website. And if your conversion rate, meaning for hiring, is less than 11%, you are below the industry benchmark. Now, I share this stat because I think it's, it's, it's useful to think about, you know, because the, the more people that you're hiring, uh, that can mean something good. It can mean that, okay, you're hiring at a higher rate 
because people know your brand, they're familiar with your company, you just have a ton of traffic or awareness in your market, in your industry, in your niche, whatever it is. And so you're able to attract really high quality content, uh, rather applicants, and those applicants are just a great fit. Um, so, and, and maybe something about how you describe it and your, you know, there's clarity about what the role entails. It's really well defined. Okay. So, uh, but don't necessarily think that, okay, because you only have a 1% higher rate that it's somehow bad. Uh, in fact, at Autogrow, ours is actually very, very low because we, we go up, we go for volume and we also, we want to optimize for quality in terms of applicants that we are pre-approving to work uh, with our clients at the bottom of the funnel. So we generally only take the top two to 3% of applicants who are coming in. And we make, and the other reason why it's lower, again, not necessarily a bad thing, it's just that we will have, we'll go through more steps and we'll ask the applicant to go through more steps to, again, maximize the probability of a good outcome. Um, because we wanna make sure that everyone that we hire shows up uh, that they are open to feedback, they're reliable, all that good stuff. Um, so again, maximizing the probability of good outcome, which is having a great hire. Tip number two is use the right job posting sites to attract applicants to your hiring funnel. We actually recently wrote a detailed article on this. If you're interested to check out all of the different uh, free and paid job posting websites and some stats, some uh, research to go along with this, according to Talentigy, 74.5% of people surveyed say that job boards are the top resource uh, that they look to when starting a job search. So use job boards, okay? And use popular ones, uh, especially you know, within your uh, industry if you have some. Uh, most of uh, the job posting sites see billions of page views per month, like Craigslist, and 77% of recruiters actually rely on LinkedIn or say they rely on LinkedIn for hiring new team members according to top resume. That sounds a little bit like a sales stat uh, that LinkedIn would use in one of their brochures for HR recruiters. But um, when they say rely, I think what that really means is, oh, like they'll, they'll check LinkedIn, they'll see the person's profile because a lot to kind of like cross-reference with their resume or other things they may have said on their application. So, uh, so there you go. Tip number three is understand that remote work is not a trend, it's here to stay and become the norm, especially with the Rona having entered our lives. Uh, and despite uh, it seems, it looks like we all hope that uh, the vaccine is going to be coming soon and great. And there's like five different vaccines in the, in the works at the time of this video. Uh, so we hope that all works out great, but it's really accelerated a trend that was already there, which is remote work becoming the norm rather than the exception. Um, so the world has kind of changed overnight in this way. And now it's, it's no longer uh, weird to be full-time employed and be at home at your own desk with your laptop or, you know, a desktop computer, whatever the case, and just be working full time from home. Uh, now, obviously, you know, uh, pros and cons with that, but it's it's a change that's here to stay. Uh, but the the pros really weigh, outweigh the cons, and that is backed up by this stat from Buffer, according to some research that they did. Is ninety nine percent of the people that Buffer surveyed said that they would like to work remotely at least some of the time for the rest of their careers. So 99%. So people are obviously enjoying the fact that they don't have to commute. Top benefit right there. And 95% also recommend remote work to others in their lives, from coworkers and friends to family members, again, according to Buffer, 95%. So pretty high satisfaction rating with the flexibility that remote work has to offer. So here's recruiting tip number four. Maintain excellent communication throughout the hiring process. That is absolutely vital, okay? Uh, because many times, you know, good applicants, they can, or great applicants, they can slip through the cracks and they can, you know, disappear due to you not communicating well enough in terms of uh, expectations, in terms of clarity for what uh, you expect, in terms of, you know, when you're going to be actually getting back to them. Um, because if, 
if they're making a commitment to maybe wait to hear from you versus accepting another offer, well, maybe your offer might have been better, as an example. So according to eBulletins, to illustrate, according to eBulletins, 84% of respondents report that virtual communication is more difficult than in-person communication. And I completely agree with this because uh, as I was talking to our project manager earlier today about this, um, working online and having done it for years at this point, uh, the practice and, and just seeing like, okay, like for example, you'll give, um, like when I first started, I would give maybe a designer a certain, you know, input as far as, okay, I'd like you to do this task. And then they come back with the task completed according to what, how they interpreted what I had said. And it wouldn't be what I was actually asking them for. So um, being high, highly specific is uh, really important for uh, getting a really great outcome. And a lot of people don't know that that's a point of friction in terms of uh, virtual productivity. Because again, through text, a lot of details can be left out. Um, and it takes a little more effort to type versus just, you know, talking um, in person, face to face. But speaking of that, another stat, the most beneficial forms, according to eBulletins again, the most beneficial forms of communication between virtual team members that were re reported in this uh, study were regular face-to-face -face meetings, 93%, conference calls, 93%, and video conferencing down a little bit more at 84%. So that's interesting that video conferencing uh, is 84% versus face-to-face -face, uh, meetings um, uh, being 93%. But it makes sense when you think about it because maybe face-to-face -face meetings implies more of a one-on-one -on -one smaller uh, group or uh, sort of a, a call situation versus virtual conferencing. More people are on the call, so therefore they might be less uh, productive in that way. Um, so, but in terms of, in terms of the hiring process, uh, actually communicating, you know, when something is going to happen, uh, due dates, uh, when you're going to get back to them with a decision, you want to set the, those expectations up front. And you, it's also, I think, really, really important to be testing them to see how well they communicate. And, uh, it also gives you a chance to just give them kind of a, the most basic task of all, like, okay, do you show up and do you show up on time? So the article that we actually wrote with more than five tips, uh, and I'm going to give you the fifth tip in a second, so stay tuned. But the link to the full article with more tips is in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Auto Road, you can just scroll on down the page and, uh, and, and check it out. But if you're watching this on YouTube, the link is in the description. Just click that like button, don't smash it, don't crush it. Just give it a nice tap if you're finding this video content and the, these tips that I'm giving you valuable. I really appreciate it. And also be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys, uh, either on YouTube or on the actual blog post itself. Um, so that being said, um, tip number five for recruiting a reliable, virtual team is don't trust every applicant just because they're nice to you or they fawn over you or they you know you, they kind of have stars in their eyes because they researched you beforehand and so you know they saw a photo of you online and that's oh my god it's it's the ceo coo you know partner whatever uh founder like in person uh through video you know don't uh you trust but verify okay trust but verify and you know i i think that just having this mindset of uh skepticism or that you know your trust in each applicant must be earned because you, you really need to emphasize and weigh in your mind the cost of a bad hire okay someone who looks really good on paper or even works uh, and, and puts their best foot forward for like the first couple of weeks, but then just their productivity, their performance, whatever, just falls off a cliff. And you don't want that. Uh, or maybe just, you know, their attitude, they just, maybe they just put on a facade, they put on a mask and it turns out that they're just hell to work with because they are terrible communicators. Um, like, 
we had, um, and I, and I think, you know, this is why it's, it's so, uh, it's such a painful problem that we solved at autogrow.co for our clients. Um, like we had a copywriter that we hired uh, a little while ago. We'd hired her on a trial basis. Again, you know, it's part of our process and met with her nice person, but like really, really, really kind of specific and not no flexibility at all. Um, so like, for example, like we, like right off the bat, she started arguing about semantics of whether something was an example or a template um, without realizing that uh, it was like some sort of a, a share setting on the Google document that made it look more like an example than a template. But even then it was like, it's an example, she said. And we were like, okay, uh, you know, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> And ultimately it didn't, you know, you know a few days later, uh, we made the decision that it, it wasn't gonna work out. So uh, once again, don't trust every applicant just because they're nice to you because that's what they're gonna do. They, they want to make the sale, they want to be hired. Um, so you need to be nice about it and just you know, know that uh, it's gonna show up in terms of performance and giving skill tests, which is something that we've made video, videos about uh, in the past. All right. So speaking of hiring, uh, I'd encourage you to check out autogrow.co if you are interested in delegating all of your digital marketing tasks without the headaches of hiring. None at all. Because autogrow is like project management software with proven professionals. Again, you know, we're only recruiting the top two, three percent of people that apply to work with us and we're training them. Okay, so you don't have to, you don't get involved with any of that. You just sign up uh, and, and it gets like project management software, but the proven professionals, copywriters, designers, developers, uh, strategists, um, and more app management, they're already inside ready and waiting to just get the work done. And you can put in unlimited requests, you get unlimited brand profiles, and it's just an amazing value proposition uh, we solved our own problem because uh, we used to be an agency. And so we actually, we're, we work with a lot of agencies these days who have this exact same problem and are using Autogrow to scale, to take on more clients than they ever thought possible. Uh, but we're also working with a ton of growing businesses, uh, everything from roofing companies to e-commerce to coaching and so much more. Um, and we're just getting, we're, we're so excited that we're getting testimonials uh, from our clients on a daily basis and compliments and the, that means the world to us uh, because again you know you don't have to do the work it's all done for you and we can do all of your digital marketing tasks and projects you just delegate it over to us lead magnets landing pages uh, entire funnels website designs uh, ads ad optimization managing your CRM uh, updating your WordPress maintenance type of tasks uh, it's it, Pretty much the only limit is your imagination. Okay, so go ahead, check us out at autogrow.co to learn more. And we look forward to helping you to autogrow your business. Again, delegate all your digital marketing tasks and projects without the headaches of hiring. Okay, so autogrow.co. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys. And until next time, as always, Keep converting, keep auto-growing, and stay focused. I'll talk to you soon.